Hello, this is Mike from Applied Motion Products. Welcome to part three of our video tutorial series showing how to get up and running with an Applied Motion Products Ethernet IP integrated motor in Studio 5000. In this installment, we'll cover some of the basics of sensorless hard stop homing, including what all the different variables in the AOI actually do. Then I'll show you how to execute some hard stop homing routines using the hard stop homing AOI. If you'd like to follow along, the AOIs I'll be using can be found in the support section of our website, AppliedMotion.com, under Application Note 46. The input and output assemblies are detailed in the Ethernet IP appendix of our host command reference, which can be downloaded at AppliedMotion.com HCR. And the EDS file for your particular drive can be found under Downloads on the Drive's product page. Okay, let's start by talking a little bit about hard stop homing. Hard stop homing allows you to home your system without the use of external positioning or homing sensors, providing you have a suitable mechanical setup. The basic principle is that you run your motor one direction or another until you hit a physical hard stop. The concept has been around a long time, and you can certainly do this with a bunch of sequential commands in a number of different ways. But at AMP, we've developed a special embedded SCL command that makes the process as seamless as possible, and implemented that into one of our AOIs, so you can use it in Studio 5000. In previous videos, I've been using the TSM23X integrated motor, but now I've switched to a different setup using some of our newer products. The drive I'm using is an SSDC 10IP in a step servo drive, and connected to the SSDC, I have one of our MCB linear actuators. This houses a step servo motor here in this section, a linear actuator with carriage here, and a single cable that connects back to the SSDC. If you have any questions about the SSDC or MCB actuator, please reach out to the apps team or your regional sales manager. The hard stop home move consists of either two or three motion segments kicked off by a single command. The first motion segment is the hunt for hard stop. This is where the motor moves in one direction or the other until it hits a hard stop just like this. You need to define the acceleration, the deceleration, the velocity, the starting direction, and the current for this segment. This is done using the HA1, HL1, HV1, HO, and HC variables. The current is especially important here. You want a current just above the amount it takes to move the load at your given velocity. The closed loop drive monitors their current required to do that move, and the drive moves the motor in the direction indicated by the sign of HO, until the current spikes up above that HC value. Then the drive notes is at the, the hard stop limit. The combination of HC and HB1 allows you to gently bump the hard stop without crashing into it at full current and full speed. You just need to be sure you don't set it so low that the hard stop is falsely detected too early due to friction, something in the way like this. This can be an issue over time, for example, if your lead screw wears or gets dirty. When phase one is complete, your motor will be sitting right here at the hard stop. After we find the hard stop, we have a choice to make. We can either move a fixed offset off of the hard stop, or from the hard stop, we can first look for the next encoder index pulse and then move a fixed offset from the index pulse location. Let's ignore the index pulse for one second um, and just assume we want to move to a fixed distance. So in order to do that, you need to define the acceleration, the deceleration, the velocity, and the offset distance for this move segment. This is done using the HA2, HL2, HV2, and that same HO variable that we used in the first segment. In that first segment, the drive had moved in the direction indicated by the sign of HO to find the hard stop. And now it moves in the opposite direction by the absolute value of HO to get to a final location. Note that the HC command is only used in the initial segment. Now that we're no longer in danger of hitting the hard stop, the max running current defaults back to whatever your normal max running current is. And that's it for the offset move. When this move segment is complete, your motor will be at a predetermined distance away from the hard stop. Now let's revisit that encoder index option. If desired, after we first find the hard stop, we can back up and move the motor to the next index pulse on the encoder. Just like the other two segments, we need to set the acceleration, the deceleration, and the velocity for this phase. We do that with the HA3, HL3, and HV3 variables. 
there's no need to define a direction here, as like the offset move, we are by definition moving away from the hard stop. And there's no need to define a distance here, as by definition, we are moving just until we hit that next encoder index pulse. If highly precise positioning is important to you, you might want to consider using the index pulse segment. Depending on a number of factors like speed, friction, load, etc., your actual hard stop home location might vary by some very small number of counts cycle after cycle. And since your offset segment is a relative move from the hard stop position, your offset ending position can be off by that same number of counts. The encoder index allows you to correct for that, since the encoder index pulse never changes location. So you can think of hard stop homing without the index as getting you very close to the same position every time. But if hitting that same target, count for count, is important to you, you can add in the encoder index pulse move to guarantee you'll hit exactly the same mark every time. So how do we enable or disable that index pulse segment? That's where the HS command comes in. With HS set to zero, the index pulse move won't happen, and the hard stop homing will be complete after the offset move. With HS set to one, the index pulse move segment will happen, and the hard stop homing will be complete after we move a defined distance from the first index pulse after the hard stop. It's a bit complicated to wrap your head around, but let's go through some examples to see if we can clear it up. We'll also touch on resetting the drive's position counter after homing in the examples. Videos one and two went through importing the EDS file, importing the AOIs, and getting communications up and running. So I'm gonna skip over all of that here in video three. I've got my program now running with the input assembly and the status code AOIs up above to monitor what's going on, status code input assembly. I've also got the hard stop homing AOI imported and tagged out. And then down here I have a EP instruction, an SP instruction, and the stop kill AOI. Just in case things get out of hand, I have to stop the motor quickly. It's nice to have this up and running and ready to go. And we'll talk about the EP and the SP at the end. Now, if we look at our hard stop homing AOI here, you can see on the left we have all of our SCL commands that we talked about in the previous section of, the, of this video. And on the right-hand side, we have all the tag names. And you can see that I've tagged all these out. In the case of the accelerations, I've just made all the accelerations the same, this homing axel tag. I've made all the decelerations the same. And then I've called out the current and the velocity separately. And I also have this go bit. Just as a note, you can ignore this HD variable here. That's an archive command that's no longer in use. Okay, it's finally time to move the motor. We can go ahead and run some test case to see what this looks like in practice and tweak these variables and see what effect that has. Just like the other motion AOIs, the trigger here is a low to high transition on this go bit. So right now I have a 20,000 count offset. I'm gonna move starting in the counterclockwise direction. I can tell that because the HO command is negative at a value of 20,000. The homing current I'm going to use is 0 0.5 amps. I'm going to use a very slow homing velocity for HV1. So this is the initial segment where I'm going to move to the hard stop home. And HV2, where I move to the offset, is going to be twice as fast. And HV3 is not going to be used because HS is set to zero. So this means I'm going to do a two segment move. I'm going to move from the current position counterclockwise to the hard stop, and then back 20,000 counts. So let's do a low to high transition here. And I can see I'm moving backwards, hard stop, offset. And that's it, pretty simple. Let's make that offset a little bit bigger just so we can see the difference. I'm gonna make it 80,000, four times as big, and let's just do the same move again. Low to high transition, hard stop, and now we can see the longer offset move. So, let's start now changing things around. Maybe we will add in the index pulse move. And you can see here, the index velocity I have at 10 RPS, so it's gonna be very, very quick. And so what you'll see is a one RPS move back, so a very slow move to the hard stop, very quick move to the index, and then a two RPS move back to the offset position which again is gonna be a little bit further this way now because we're gonna hit the hard stop, then move to the index, and then do the offset move from the index. So let me just keep my finger here so we can get a, get a mark. 
So I'm moving back to the hard stop, then click index, and now offset move. And you can see it's just a little bit further back. Just one index. One index pulse further back. Now, just for fun, let's change the sign of HO. What if you want it home in the clockwise direction? All we do, change that to plus 80,000. So now we're going to run here to this extreme. We're going to do an index pulse back in this direction, and then we're going to go 80,000 back. Let's try it. Very slow move to the hard stop. Quick index and offset move. And that's it. And just for fun, why don't we make the offset move pretty quick. So again, we have a nice, slow, gentle bump to the hard stop, and then it's going to move back very fast. And if we increase our accelerations and decelerations, we're not even really going to see that slow down like we did before. And you can see those two very distinct moves there moving to the first index pulse, and then moving back to the offset from the index pulse. And let's turn off the index pulse and do another move. And so now we'll see just two moves, a slow move and then a fast move. Now let's talk about EP0 and SP0 for a second. If you look at the absolute position here, you can see the encoder position is 14,433. The absolute position is 70,463. Um, the encoder position is in 20,000 steps per rev. This is the standard setting on the step servo drive. And the absolute position is whatever the EG setting is set to. Now let's talk about the SP and the EP commands for a second. The the drive tracks the position in two ways. It tracks in native encoder counts, and that's the encoder position. And then it tracks in some sort of a scaled counts, and that's the absolute position. And you can set this scaling with the EG command. Uh, and you can configure it in steps over quick tuner, or you can configure it on the fly with an AOI or an SCL write. So in this case, you have an encoder position of you know, just over 14,000, and an absolute position of just over 70,000. And at this point, our homing routine is done, so we may want to consider this to be our zero position. And if we want to do absolute moves from this position, it makes a lot of sense to make the current position we're sitting at zero. So in order to do that, we need to send an EP0 and an SP0. And we're going to do that in these SCL command execute AOIs that I have written down here. So here we have our EP command string. And this is actually just EP, um, convert, the character's EP converted into decimal. And then we have SP converted in decimal over here. And then the value we're going to send for both is zero. So we'll do our low to high transitions, send the command. And you can look up here, the absolute position zero, the encoder position, yeah, it's nearly zero. Because this is a closed loop drive, if you, I'm just putting a little bit of force on the carriage here, and you can watch that encoder position change. And it changes by one or two counts, nothing to worry about there. And then now, if we do our home position, if we do homing again, we should land at the same zero position. Watch this position number, and we're back to the same place. But now, if we go to a different offset, let's call it a 20,000 count offset, we're not going to land on the zero position again. We're going to land at the 60,000 position. And let's say we do a offset in the negative direction. We're going to move back to this hard stop and go back out to an offset from the other hard stop. So we're going to be nowhere even related to that initial home position, some crazy number here. But if we want this to be our new home position, we can just toggle the SP and the EP bits. And then you can see our positions were reset to zero. And that's it.
You are now able to hard stop home your motor using your Applied Motion Products Ethernet IP drive and your Allen Bradley PLC in Studio 5000. And hopefully you understand the theory behind hard stop homing and the variables involved. The AOIs I use can be found in the support section of our website, AppliedMotion.com, under Application Note 46. If you'd like more detailed information about our Ethernet IP implementation, input and output assemblies, etc., the Ethernet IP appendix of the host command reference document is always the best place to start. You can find the latest version at AppliedMotion.com HCR. In future videos, we'll be exploring things like adding multiple drives on a network and manipulating and decoding I.O. on the drives. If you have any questions about our AOIs, Ethernet IP communications, or motion applications in general, please reach out to our applications engineering team through our website at AppliedMotion.com. Email us at support at appliedmotion.com or just give our apps engineers a call at 800 525 1609. Thanks for watching. I hope this was a helpful video. If you have any other topics you'd like to see covered, please leave them in the comments below or let our apps engineers know when you talk to them.